This video is brought to you by Audible. Go to audibletrial.com slash halocanon for a 30-day free trial and a free credit on an audiobook download. Stay tuned for more details. On August 30th, 2552, the UNSC Colony of Reach, the military powerhouse second only to Earth, fell to the Covenant. Fleeing the battle, the UNSC Pillar of Autumn, carrying what was thought to be the last remaining Spartan II, made a seemingly random slipspace jump. In truth, the AI Cortana, using data pulled from a Forerunner ship trapped beneath the ice sheets of Reach and symbols found on an artifact from Sigma Octanus IV, was able to generate a set of coordinates. With a Covenant fleet on their tail, what lay on the other side of this jump could be the difference between life and death, not just for the Autumn's crew, but for humanity as a species. Welcome back, Canaanites. Earlier this year, I released a comprehensive timeline of the Battle of Reach, bringing together the several pieces of media that tell Reach's full fall. While no other battle in the Halo universe has as many retellings and additions, there are still plenty of timelines to explore, and today we'll dive into another one. Halo CE's story has been expanded upon a few times since the game's original release, notably with the novelization Halo The Flood and the arcade game Halo Fireteam Raven more recently, but there are also other pieces of the story puzzle out there. While not nearly as confusing as Reach has become, I feel there's value beyond just another popular topic in exploring the setting. Notably, there are heavy conflicts between the dates of certain events as depicted in Halo The Flood and official timelines 343 has put out over the years. I'll discuss more on that after the timeline itself, but for now, sit back, relax, and enjoy the Battle of Installation 04 timeline. August 30th, approximately 1600 hours, Military Standard Time. The UNSC Pillar of Autumn, having recovered a fragment of Cortana from Noble Team on the now burning surface of Reach, makes an emergency slipspace jump. Unknown to the crew, the jump was not as random as would normally be demanded of the Cole Protocol. Most of the ship's crew would enter cryostasis once in slipspace. From his flagship Seeker of Truth, Supreme Commander Thel Vadimi orders all the ships in his command to pursue the Autumn. Neither party could properly prepare for what would come next. Unknown date, unknown time. Covenant ships being faster and more efficient at navigating the slipstream, the fleet of particular justice exits slipspace well before the Pillar of Autumn, discovering one of the long sought after holy rings, Halo. The fleet takes position on the far side of the local gas giant, Threshold, to await the arrival of the human vessel. In the meantime, the fleet's minor prophet, the Prophet of Stewardship, claims that the appearance of a holy ring is a religious matter and invokes adherence to reclamation procedures. Thelvatomy and Stewardship meet aboard the Seeker of Truth and attempt to contact High Charity to seek clarification on proper procedure. Contact fails, and no decision is made. During this time, Stewardship orders the undiminished Entelechy and its sister ship Purity of Spirit to conduct secret, close-range scans of the ring. During the span of its mission, the Entelechy would take aboard several Forerunner constructs and a wealth of records on Halo and its outlying installations. September 18th, approximately 22-20 hours. Cortana begins the process of waking the Autumn's main crew. As Captain Jacob Keyes exits Cryo, Cortana updates him on the status of the ship. September 19th, 0103 hours. Captain Keyes has technicians on standby to unfreeze the Master Chief, at the moment thought to be the last Spartan II super soldier. 0120 hours. The Pillar of Autumn exits slipspace in the Soel system. Before it is a massive gas giant, its moon, and between them, an object of unknown origin, a massive ring world. Within the fleet of particular justice, the Prophet of Stewardship orders no fire upon the human vessel for fear of damaging the Holy Ring. Instead, he has fighters and boarding parties dispatched. Among these boarders is an Asuna, or Eye of the Prophet, named Iznan Nosoli. Nosoli is tasked with gathering intelligence and capturing the human vessel's AI. Supreme Commander Vadimi ignores the Prophet's orders and opens fire on the ship. Unknown Time 
From Installation 04, Monitor 343 Guilty Spark detects the approach of the Pillar of Autumn and issues a warning to back away from the installation. Upon discovering that the vessel is human-made, he drops the installation's defenses and invites the ship to approach. Spark's message would go unanswered. 0127 hours. With the help of its GATL-1 longsword escorts, the Autumn is able to fight off the Covenant's fighters. However, with the incoming fire and boarding parties, Captain Keyes orders all crews to station. As Marines prepare for boarders, the man thought to be the last of the legendary Spartan II super soldiers, the Master Chief, John 117, is awoken from cryostasis. Meanwhile, the Autumn's contingent of orbital drop shock troopers, ODSTs, are ordered to defend the ship's power plant. One squad in particular, Fireteam Raven, briefly joins in this effort before moving on to support the rest of the ship's Marines in general defense. The Spartan makes his way to the bridge to meet with Captain Keyes. Keyes initiates the Cole Protocol Article 2 and orders the Autumn to be abandoned. Cortana locks in a series of landing zones on the nearby ring world and a subroutine to land the ship. She is then given to the Master Chief to be escorted off. As John and Cortana make their way through the ship supporting Marine forces along the way, a special operations elite named Zuka Zamami attempts to stop the Spartan. He takes a pistol shot to the head, but miraculously isn't killed. His grunt troopers use this as an opportunity to escort the elite off the Autumn and avoid fighting any further. Mission Clock Deployment Starts The Master Chief and Cortana make it to one of the last remaining lifeboats and escape the Autumn. The ship's ODSTs escape via the single-occupant exo-atmosphere insertion vehicles. A number of pilots manage to escape in their pelicans as well. Captain Keyes sets the Autumn on a collision course with the ring before evacuating with his bridge crew. They are closely followed by the Osuna, but Keyes notices the shimmer of the Elite's active camouflage and kills him. D plus 2 minutes, 51 seconds. Evacuation craft from the Autumn start entering the ring's atmosphere and landing. One of the first parties on the ring, Escape Pod Lima Foxtrot Alpha 43 crashes due to air brake failure. Master Chief and Cortana are the only survivors. John gathers ammo and supplies and moves out as the Covenant begin landing in the area. D plus 5 minutes, 8 seconds. Captain Keyes and the command crew of the Autumn land on the ring and begin making their way to the Pillar of Autumn's crash site. On another part of the ring, the ODSTs of Fireteam Raven also land. As the Autumn roars overhead to its final resting place, the squad begins their 28-hour trek towards it. They luckily manage to keep in contact with the AI Wellesley during this, the dumb AI guiding them to the Autumn's crash site. Meanwhile, Major Antonio Silva, commander of the Autumn's ODST contingent, has gathered up many of his troops and a couple of pelicans and works out a plan to take on a nearby Covenant-held butte. Laced with Forerunner structures, it'll make an ideal location for a central base of operations for the foreseeable future. Not all Marine forces would be so lucky, other groups having to set up their own staging areas in other parts of the ring. One such group would be wiped out by a Covenant assault before the end of the conflict. D plus 3 hours, 14 minutes, 26 seconds. The Master Chief encounters Fireteam Charlie, led by Sergeant Johnson. After fighting off local Covenant forces, Cortana makes contact with Pelican Echo 419, piloted by Carol Fohammer Raleigh. She swings in to pick up Fireteam Charlie and drops off a Warthog so Chief and Cortana can quickly make their way to landing sites of other escape pods and rescue more Marines. During this, John and Cortana discover a type of Forerunner terminal. The data would not be deciphered during their time on the ring, and it would not be the last message the pair discovers. On another part of the ring, Keys and the command crew are evading Covenant pursuers. Strangely, they seem to be trying to capture the crew rather than kill them, an odd behavior for the Covenant. After hours of running, one of the command crew, Ensign Ellen Dowski, is constantly complaining and begging they surrender. Fed up with her behavior, Keyes has her stripped of her weapon and supplies and tied up so that she can personally surrender. The rest of the command crew and the Marine escort move out. At the Covenant Hell Butte, Silva and his ODSTs finish off the last of the Covenant occupiers and dub their new real estate Alpha Base. As the morning wraps up, the Master Chief and Cortana finish rescuing Marines and are picked up by Fohammer for transport to Alpha Base. Meanwhile, Captain Keyes and his crew find themselves with their backs literally against a wall, trapped in a box canyon surrounded by Covenant. They're approached by a few Sanghili and Ensign Dowski. As soon as she identifies Keyes, she, the command crew, and their marine escort are killed, and Keyes is captured. 
Upon arriving at Alpha Base, the Master Chief takes the opportunity to grab 10 hours of uninterrupted sleep, a hot shower, and consume a pair of MREs. This would be one of the few opportunities he'd have for true rest during the mission on Alpha Halo. Afterwards, John is debriefed by Major Silva and his second-in-command, Lieutenant Melissa McKay. The meeting is tense, Silva having a disdain for the Spartan II program, but the two are able to reach an understanding and conclude with a briefing for plans to save Captain Keyes. Unknown Time The Prophet of Stewardship dispatches an expeditionary force to the Threshold Gas Mine, Sessa Refumi and Loka Bandoli commanding these forces. Supreme Commander Thel issues a closed band transmission demanding all military forces be concentrated on the human threat. Sometime later, secondary and tertiary forces are dispatched to a Forerunner weapons cache on the ring. Communication is eventually lost and a fourth group is sent. Thel again disapproves and sends another transmission to cease the misappropriation of military forces. No response is received. D plus 17 hours, 11 minutes, 4 seconds. The Master Chief, Cortana, and a contingent of ODSTs and Marines, led by Sergeant Parker, are escorted to the holding site of the Covenant CCS battlecruiser Truth and Reconciliation. Having been damaged during the fight with the Autumn earlier in the day, the cruiser had come to rest over a dry desert plain for maintenance and since become central to Covenant operations on the ring, and now it held Captain Keys. The Master Chief and Marines deploy, taking out local Covenant defenses and moving towards the ship's gravity lift. After clearing the area around the lift, additional Marine forces are dropped in to join the Spartan in raiding the Covenant ship. On board, the Marines move to the ship's brig, led by the signal from Keyes' Command Neural Interface, or CNI, transponder, taking out Covenant forces along the way, including the ship's shipmaster, Lat Ravami. Arriving in the brig, Keyes and a few captured Marines are freed, and everyone escapes using a Covenant Spirit dropship. During its raid, Monitor 343 Guilty Spark contacts a Covenant AI aboard the Truth and Reconciliation, trying to warn it about what the Halo Ring is meant to contain and cease aggressions towards the humans or Reclaimers. Unfortunately, the AI is uncooperative, even seeming to want the Covenant to unleash the Flood, hoping that they would be wiped out and that it would be free. 343 Guilty Spark leaves the presence of the AI, vowing to return later to decommission it. While the raid of the Truth and Reconciliation is going on, Marine and ODST forces on Alpha Base are preparing a raid on the Pillar of Autumn crash site. As they are, 2nd Lieutenant Dalu returns from the raid with tons of captured Covenant equipment to arm and reinforce Alpha Base. Lieutenant Melissa McKay will lead the raid on the Autumn. Meanwhile, in the wake of the raid on the Truth and Reconciliation, Zuka Zamami is tasked with hunting down and killing the demon by any means necessary. Previously, he had requested this detail, but it had been denied, dismissed as petty revenge. No longer. Unknown Time Supreme Commander Thel Vatami deploys a single infantry unit to the Ascendant Justice, the supercarrier where the Minor Prophet resides, to relieve him of duty. The unit is destroyed upon approach, and the Prophet notes that further attempts to subvert his authority will be met with the same fate. September 20th D plus 28 hours, 15 minutes, 25 seconds as the sun rises over the Pillar of Autumn crash site, Lieutenant McKay begins her assault on the ship, her ODST and Marine forces taking out many of the local Covenant forces and storming the downed ship. ODST Fireteam Raven manages to make it to the Autumn just as the assault begins, joining the fight. A few hours later and most of the Covenant forces are eliminated or sealed in a different section of the ship, allowing the UNSC forces to grab ammo, armament, and other supplies from the ship, including Scorpion tanks and a Cyclops. All of this is moved back to Alpha Base. Meanwhile, the Master Chief, aided by Cortana, lead an assault on the location known as the Silent Cartographer, an installation on an isolated island that holds a map for the Halo Ring. The Chief and Marines storm the beach, eliminating Covenant forces, and search for the map room. During this, Zuka Zamami makes his first attempt on the Spartan's life using Hunters, but this is ultimately unsuccessful. On another part of the ring, Captain Keyes leads his own contingent of Marines to secure what they believe to be a weapons cache. D plus 44 hours, 38 minutes, 19 seconds. On their return to Alpha Base, slowed by the armament recovered from the Autumn, Lieutenant McKay's convoy is attacked by a group of Covenant led by Fieldmaster Noga Putumi. His attack is ultimately a failure, and Putumi dies during the battle. Meanwhile, after disabling site security, John and Cortana access the map room, revealing the location of Halo's control room. 
Once aboard Echo 419, Cortana guides Fohammer to a nearby entrance to Halo's tunnel system, which runs throughout the superstructure of the ring. These are what they'll use to assault the control room. At the Covenant cache site, Keyes' forces discover that local Covenant forces, largely dead now, had tried to lock the site down. They soon learn why. A new enemy, an ancient enemy, the Flood, were awoken by the Covenant and now released by Keyes. Almost all of the UNSC forces are consumed by the alien parasite, their bodies deformed and twisted into horrible nightmare forms with the intent of spreading the infection further. Only Sergeant Avery Johnson is able to escape. Strangely, the flood forms seem to have trouble infecting him, giving Johnson the chance he needs to escape. Over the next several hours, Keyes will fight the ravenous flood hive mind as he is incorporated into their new central intelligence, a proto grave mind. September 21st, Unknown Time. Following Cortana's instructions, Echo 419 drops off her and the Master Chief at a door that ultimately leads to Halo's control room. The Spartan begins cutting down waves of Covenant forces, in time meeting up with the remains of Fireteam Zulu. They continue to push to the control room. The Prophet of Stewardship, in the meantime, orders the execution of Soha Rolami, an officer within the fleet of Particular Justice's Council of Masters, for his failure to contain the Flood outbreak on the ring. He is made an example of to show the price of failure, in particular to Zuka Zamami, should he fail to kill the demon. Meanwhile, Lt. Melissa McKay and her convoy continue to make their way to Alpha Base. Zuka Zamami sets a trap, leaving a grunt named Yayap to be captured so he can be brought back to Alpha Base. From there, Yayap would be able to signal whenever the demon was next present at the base. McKay's marines take the Ungoy prisoner as planned. Approaching a large pyramid structure, Cortana informs John that the control room is at the top. He fights his way up and connects Cortana to the control room's council. Searching through Halo's data, Cortana discovers the true purpose of Halo and the supposed Covenant weapons cache. With no time to explain, she rushes the Master Chief out the door telling him to rescue Keys. Cortana, as a result, is left in the control room by herself. D plus 58 hours, 36 minutes, 31 seconds. Fohammer lowers Echo 419 into a dark and damp swamp, the last known location of Captain Keys. John 117 begins his lonely search, eventually stumbling upon the entrance to an unknown facility as Covenant forces run from an unknown enemy. Entering, he finds nothing but an empty lift, which he takes deeper into the facility. In another part of the swamp, Flood-infected Covenant repair the spirit dropship Brilliant Gift, taking it to a Covenant agricultural support ship, the Infinite Secor. The crew make a distress call as the Flood begin to consume them. From the flagship Seeker of Truth, Thelvatomy deploys Special Operations Commander Urtas Vadumi to the Infinite Secor to investigate the distress call. The team finds the crew and wildlife infected by the Flood and destroy the ship. Urtas, the only survivor, loses two of his mandibles in the process. The ship's legate, the Minister of Etiology, is infected and subsequently killed during this mission. Upon hearing the after-action report, Supreme Commander Thelvatomy orders an emergency quarantine response. All remaining sterile ships are to immediately fire upon any that do not return clean biometric scans. The undiminished IntelliKey was among those shot down under this order. Back on the ring, Alpha Base comes under attack after Zuka Zamami manages to commandeer a pelican and force the pilot to escort them to the base. While his main forces engage with Marines, Zuka moves into Alpha Base to find the demon, who had long since left. Zuka is forced to retreat, taking Yayap with him. Fireteam Raven aids in the defense of Alpha Base, however they are eventually evacuated to another part of the ring for a different mission. D plus 60 hours, 33 minutes, 54 seconds. The Master Chief had found where Captain Key's team had gone down, discovering the helmet of Private Wallace A. Jenkins. Watching the footage recorded by the helmet cam, seeing the fate of the Captain and his Marine escort, the Spartan finds himself almost immediately attacked by the Flood. John fights his way through the facility encountering other UNSC forces and making for a large tower to be evacuated from the swamp. Instead, he encounters the monitor of the installation, 343 Guilty Spark. The monitor teleports John away, saying he needs the Spartan's help to stop the flood. After arriving in a location known as the library, John is informed that he needs to retrieve the installation's index in order to stop the spread of the flood. As he fights his way through the library, John comes across the mangled body of Sergeant Marvin Mobuto. The Marine had been recruited by Spark for the same task the Spartan had, 
and despite lacking the Mjolnir or the augmentations of a Spartan, had made it quite far into the library. John continues onward, fighting his way to the Index and eventually retrieving it. The Index is then taken by Guilty Spark until they can reach the control room and the pair are teleported out of the library. Meanwhile, Lieutenant McKay uses the remains of a downed pelican to set a trap for Covenant forces, faking a crash to draw in a few and take them out. During this battle, the Flood shows up, including the infected body of Private Wallace A. Jenkins. Due to the long period of stasis, the infection form that had embedded itself in Jenkins hadn't quite done its work completely, leaving a part of the Marine aware of what was going on around him. The Marines managed to fight off the Covenant and Flood, capturing a few Flood bodies for examination and the still alive Jenkins, bringing them back to Alpha Base. Unknown Time The Prophet of Stewardship moves with his security contingent from the Ascendant Justice to the Truth and Reconciliation, ordering patrols throughout the ship and for anyone who poses a threat to the Consecration to be detained, up to and including the Supreme Commander. Not long after, Thelvatomy boards the Ascendant Justice. No shots are fired as the remaining crew acknowledge Thel's authority. D plus 68 hours, 3 minutes, 27 seconds. Arriving back in the control room, the index is returned to John and he inserts it into the control panel. However, and luckily, Cortana stops Halo's activation and reveals the truth about the ring. The only way to stop the Flood is to kill its food source, biological life. And that is exactly what Halo is designed to do. Seeing that the Spartan is no longer going to follow protocol, Spark orders his sentinels to kill the Spartan and retrieve Cortana, who now holds the Index. The pair easily fight off the Sentinels and, with Cortana's guidance, enact a new plan. Visiting Halo's three Phase Pulse Generators, mechanisms that allow the Halo to fire deep into space, Cortana plans to use the Master Chief's Mjolnir armor to disable the generators. At Alpha Base, Lt. McKay debriefs Major Silva on their findings on the Flood, then the pair try to interrogate the infected Private Jenkins. For a brief moment, Jenkins manages to take back control, informing the pair of an imminent Flood attack from below. Meanwhile, Fireteam Raven are directed by Wellesley to the same icy canyon that the Chief is currently fighting his way through. The ODST team manages to punch a hole through Flood forces, allowing the Chief to continue his mission. Raven, meanwhile, continue to fight through waves of Flood before being pulled out. Their Evac Falcon is damaged by a Wraith Mortar on its way out, though. September 22nd, Unknown Time In the wake of his chosen Reclaimer's uncooperative actions, 343 Guilty Spark begins efforts to make contact with the remaining Halo Rings and his fellow Monitors. He also considers how he may use the Covenant's religious fervor to his advantage. D plus 73 hours, 34 minutes, 16 seconds. Finding the last of the Phase Pulse generators and disabling it, John and Cortana move on to the next part of the plan, destroying Halo. In order to do so, they'll need Captain Keyes' command codes. Tapping into Halo's teleportation grid, Cortana teleports herself and the Chief to as close to Keyes as she can manage, on board the flood-infested hull of the Truth and Reconciliation. As the pair fight their way through the ship, what remains of Keyes' mind is absorbed into the flood, despite his efforts to fight back. Within the Pillar of Autumn, Special Operations Soldier Zuka Zamami, now impersonating an elite named Huka Umami, contemplates his next move while hoping to avoid detection. His failure at the human base would surely be enough to have him killed, and now his options were limited. Worse, the flood continues to spread throughout the human vessel. At Alpha Base, the Marines prepare to evacuate as the flood try to break their way in from below. Earlier, Cortana and Wellesley made contact, Cortana informing him of their plan for the ring. The surviving Marines, under Major Silva's command, will make for the truth and reconciliation, using it to evac from Halo and return to Earth. On board the Covenant Cruiser, the Chief and Cortana finally find Keys, now fully a part of the growing proto Gravemind. With little choice, Chief punctures the Captain's skull, ripping out the neural implant to get Cortana the command codes for the Pillar of Autumn. The pair then make an escape aboard a Banshee fighter. Meanwhile, Fireteam Raven's damaged transport crashes on a remote island on the ring, and the team has to fight off waves of flood, including pure forms that had been held in stasis since the days of the Forerunner Flood War. Eventually, they're evacuated, at which point they're asked to hold off a Covenant assault on the Pillar of Autumn's crash site. They, along with a small number of Marine forces, will have to buy enough time for the Master Chief to detonate the Autumn's fusion reactor and destroy Halo. It's a one-way mission, and they all know it. Raven valiantly accepts. D 
plus 76 hours, 18 minutes, 56 seconds. As Raven and other Marine forces take on Covenant reinforcements, the Master Chief and Cortana manage to board the Pillar of Autumn and fight through Flood and Covenant to the bridge. Cortana sets the ship's engines to overload, but unfortunately, 343 Guilty Spark stops the countdown. Now, they have no other choice but to do a manual overload of the fusion engines, meaning they'll have to hit it with enough explosive power to cause the engines to destabilize. As the Spartan fights his way throughout the ship to the engine room, Zuka Zamami sees his final opportunity to eliminate the demon and begins his preparations. Meanwhile, as he continues to fight off waves of flood, one infection form manages to get close enough to John to get through his neck seal, slicing open his skin with its penetrator and nearly infecting the Spartan. Thankfully, Cortana's quick thinking allows her to redirect some of the Mjolnir armor's energy to create an electrical discharge, popping the infection form and saving John. Thanking her, the two continue their mission. Back at the Truth and Reconciliation, Silva and his Marines have managed to largely take control of the ship, helped a great deal by the Spartans' recent rampage through it. They even managed to capture the Prophet of Stewardship. The Prophet successfully sends an emergency rescue request that would go unanswered. Lieutenant McKay realizes that unless they can guarantee the ship is completely sterilized, the risk of leaving is too great. She pleads with Silva to reconsider, as does Wellesley, but Silva is too blinded by potential glory to reconsider. Seeing no other option, McKay severs a control line from the engine room to the bridge, causing the truth and reconciliation to fall to the ring's surface, killing everyone on board. Meanwhile, Master Chief and Cortana have managed to destabilize the Autumn's fusion engine and now need a way out. Cortana directs John to a service elevator that will take them to a vehicle bay. As the elevator arrives, they are confronted for the first time since the evacuation of the Autumn by Zuka Zamami. However, the Spec Ops Elite and his grunt backup are quickly cut down by the Spartan. With the destruction of Halo imminent, Thel orders his remaining ships to take cover on the far side of Threshold. On Halo, Sergeant Avery Johnson, Lieutenant Elias Haverson of the Office of Naval Intelligence, and Corporal Locklear of the ODSTs board a Pelican piloted by Petty Officer 2nd Class Sheila Pulaski, evacuating the ring. Finding his way to a Warthog, the Chief drives along the Autumn's dorsal structure until he comes to an external access junction where Fohammer can pick up him and Cortana. Unfortunately, Captain Raleigh is tailed by Banshee fighters and shot down. With only minutes left, Cortana directs John to Launch Base 7, where a single Longsword fighter remains docked. The pair just barely manage to board the Longsword in time. Outside, Fireteam Raven and a handful of survivors watch as the Longsword flies away and the Autumn's engines detonate. In space, John and Cortana watch as the explosion damages the ring, causing it to rip itself apart. Cortana scans the surrounding space for survivors, finding only dust and echoes. Unknown to the pair, the ring attempts an emergency slip space jump, though only a section of the ring manages to slip away. Meanwhile, 343 Guilty Spark manages to escape the ring's destruction. The Monitor then begins his trek towards the local gas mine over Threshold. And that concludes the Battle of Installation 04 timeline covering the events from Halo CE, its novelization Halo the Flood, Halo Fireteam Raven, Halo CE Anniversaries Terminals, comics, and other supplemental material. As noted at the start, one thing that makes my timeline here stand out is when certain events take place. In the official timelines put out by 343 Industries over the years, the level 343 Guilty Spark is said to take place on September 20th. However, as we can see by the timestamps from Halo the Flood, this level takes place 58 hours after the evacuation of the Autumn. Even under the best possible conditions, if the timestamp is accurate, the level can only take place on September 21st. As I wanted to maintain the use of times and dates like I did with the Battle of Reach timeline, I decided to go with the book's timestamps for this project against official timelines. So take that how you will. That said, the vast majority of events line up with official material, or as best as I could, get it to match. So what did you think? Let me know in the comments below. And before we go, I'd like to give a huge thanks to the Eld for reviewing my work here. It's always good to have a second set of eyes to review what you're doing. Without him, for example, I might have left out the chief shower scene, which sadly was removed from later Prince of the Flood. I can't imagine why, as it's a great humanizing moment for the Master Chief on a level we rarely get to see, but oh well. But that's a discussion for another date. 
For now, I'd like to give a shout out to the artists who provided custom art for this timeline. First, we have Mutt Muadib at Mutt Concept on Twitter, and his sister, SharkyPad, at SharkyPad on Twitter, who created the art of the Pillar of Autumn Command Crew. Be sure to check them both out on Twitter. Second, shout out to Boss Veteran at Boss Veteran 134 on Twitter, who created these custom renders of Corporal Locklear, Lieutenant Elias Haverson, Petty Officer Second Class Sheila Pulaski, and the legendary Lieutenant Melissa McKay. Be sure to check him out as well. I hope you enjoyed this timeline. Look forward to more content like it in the future. For now, this has been Halo Cannon, and I'll see y'all next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy this, be sure to check out Audible. By going to audibletrial.com slash halocanon, you can get a 30-day free trial and a free audiobook. Audible's selection is unmatched and includes all the Halo novels. You can cancel at any time and keep any audiobooks you've purchased. So check out audibletrial.com slash halocanon today.